Hi, I'm Rolling Hills family. My name is Patrick Hamilton. I have the pleasure of serving as the campus pastor of a Nashville South campus. And just a little bit of reflections on this past Sunday's message, which was confronting sin, the sin of unwholesome words. And that word unwholesome reminds me of time that I was in the kitchen. I grabbed an apple, rinsed it off, wiped it off, took a bite, and I was surprised. Because instead of a sweet and crisp and delicious taste, it was soft, it was sour, it was rotten. And I spit that piece out, threw that apple away, it had become unwholesome. And the word unwholesome in this unwholesome words actually means they are words that are rotten or polluted. We should not have any rotten or polluted words coming out of our mouth. The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 4, 29, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. I'm so grateful that Paul gives a replacement. He doesn't just say, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, period, moves on to another subject. Because if that was it, if it's just like, stop doing it, then if I'm like stopping, I'm only thinking about like, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss. And when I stub my toe, what's gonna come out? I'm gonna cuss. Don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss. Someone cuts me off in traffic, what's gonna happen? Beep, 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 and I'm bleepity bleeping while I'm in the car as well. It's gonna come out instead though, instead of just like stopping, he's saying replace it. Do not let any unwholesome have wholesome, life-giving, sustaining, benefiting those around replace that with them. Jesus has to say about this as well, about what comes out of our mouth and wholesomeness and went wholesome. And instead, he says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For the tree is recognized by its fruit. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. What the heart is full of comes out of the mouth, either wholesome or unwholesome, will come out of that. A good man brings things out, all the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings out evil things out of the evil stored up in him. And I know about that. Because before I walked with Jesus, before I was trusting in him, what would come out of my heart when people would come after me would be like envy and wrath and pride and character assassination. I would come after people. I had incredibly just coarse language, a really bad habit I developed and kind of worked against over time. But I'm so grateful now that instead of the fruit of the old Patrick, now by trusting in Jesus, there's the fruit of the Spirit. That the words that come out are love or joy or they're peaceful words. They're, there's a patience, there's kindness in my talk over and over time. Truly a tree is recognized by its fruit and the mouth speaks what the heart is. Full of. You see, when the pressures of life, and there are plenty of pressures of life, when your heart is squeezed, you will be shocked sometimes what comes out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth? When the pressures of life squeezes your heart, like I said, cut off in traffic, what comes out? When someone is doing some sort of coarse or foolish or really obscene joking, what comes out of your mouth in those moments? Because it's not a subtle sin. All sin is deadly and all people are going to recognize what comes out of your mouth. What we need is we all need either a heart transplant, get a new heart, or we always need to be working on the new hearts that we have. And only, only, only God changes the heart through his spirit. And God changes his heart first and foremost by trusting in the good news and living the good news out as a holy people. Because when they, 1 Peter 2 23 through 24 has this to say, when they hurled their insults at him or at Jesus, when they're insulting Jesus and mocking Jesus and they flogged Jesus and they put him on the cross, when he suffered on the cross and he is suffering there, he made no threats. He did not retaliate when incredible pressures came upon Jesus, when he is being punished in the worst form of capital punishment that the Roman Empire had, when he is suffering as the worst of the worst criminals, even though he is the son of God, he made no threats. He did not retaliate. Instead, with all that pressure on him, what did he do? He trusted in his father. He entrusted himself to him who judges rightly. He's trusting that his father is going to judge his life as living a right life right relationship with God, his Father, and with others, and that he's now offering up the right sacrifice, an acceptable sacrifice for the sins of the world. Truly, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. 
Jesus bore in his body on the cross or the tree. On the tree, he bore our bad fruit, our unwholesome fruit, our rotten, our polluted, our prideful, our vengeful, our attacking, our character assassination, our rotten heart fruit. Our rotten hearts went on Jesus and he died for them. He died the death we deserve to die. And what did we get in exchange for that? So that now we may truly die to sin. Sin has no longer any power over us. He gave us his righteousness, his good, wholesome heart, wholesome fruit, a right standing relationship with his father, resulting in a right relationship with others. Be holy as I am holy, God says. That's who you are when you trust in Jesus. You are holy. You are holy. You're whole. You're complete. You're righteous. So therefore, wholesome words will come out. I know it takes time. It's a process that has been with me of knowing now when I'm cut off in traffic, instead of certain words coming out, I will pray for that person. I'll remember when I've been that, that crazy person in traffic driving that way. I'll be praying about the other people around him in that moment as well. When I have those moments of someone comes after me, just kind of pausing for that moment, taking it to the Father and doing a different kind of angle or questioning or having some moment of understanding or trying to put myself in the person's shoes. Maybe they're an unbeliever and they kind of can't help it. Pray for them at that moment and represent wholesome words. Represent the gospel with my words in that moment like that. But it takes time to live out who we truly are, a holy people who have wholesome words, all for the glory of God. I hope this encourages you, uh, church family, just remembering that we truly are a people of God when we're trusting in Jesus. As this holy people of God, with the wholesome words, we are continuing to reach out. We are growing up. We want to give all. For his glory. God bless. Thanks for watching.